We're in the new antique car building and we're talking to Amos Rixman. And uh, Amos, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you feel about the show this year? Well, Jerry, it's good to see you here. Uh, nice Thank to have you, you back and uh, visiting other years. Uh, the show has certainly expanded, as you can see. The uh, development of Pawnee started way back, and it has continued. And there are exhibits of uh, tractors and engines, as well as uh, all the gasoline engines and the flea market and the area that they have back there. It really has grown a great deal. Well, the show, I think, just looks excellent this year, and all of these people responsible, board members, all the staff, the committee members, everybody involved uh, has done just an excellent job in the preparation of this show. And uh, you can tell everybody has worked real hard. It's gone together very well, and it really looks good again. Well, Jerry, you see, uh, when you work with the, the group that they have, Chatty is a fine president, and then you have a fine group of men that work together. And the town of Pawnee, too, has come in more in the recent times than they used to. They've realized the growth, they've realized the value, and uh, Pawnee is now in the state publications, as you probably know. And uh, that all helps, you know. Well, it was the city of Pawnee who chipped in and helped out with a tremendous parking problem that we've had here in the past. Oh, yes. They obtained some property adjacent to the steam yes. show grounds and they provided ample parking space now to where we don't have the problem we've had in the years past. Yes, and then as far as the uh, facilities, they've been tremendous. They've improved this building from an open shed to a very fine closed-in building. It's going to be sealed to the point where probably it's even mouse-proof, as you know, and uh, they can store their grain because in Pawnee, if the show is as early, then we have to save the grain for the next year. And that's important to have that in good storage. But then they can have it in this excellent condition with these fine floor and these antique cars. Uh, people who have very fine restored cars don't want to have them out in the open or in the grit and the crime. And so that, that's another improvement just, just, this, this, just this year, sorry. No, this is, this is an excellent improvement in the grounds. Uh, talking about the bundles, uh, the thrashing part of this show this year was excellent. I thought it all went real smooth and uh, it really looked good. Yes, we did talk about that. As a matter of fact, uh, the chairman of Threshing and some of the men, the engineer, we uh, we actually had planned to use the Avery. You probably knew that. Yes. And then there was a bit of a delay there, so we used Ed Larson's very nice advanced Rumley. But uh, the Threshing was uh, much more uh, organized this year. We had those grandstands. I had the uh, bigger tractors pull those grandstands over there. It hadn't been for the uh, for the uh, length of the parade and so much activity, we had planned to even do a bit more of explaining to the audience uh, some of the detail of threshing. Today, there aren't very many people left, you know, that actually did threshing or know about it. And uh, I don't think you could find even five out of a hundred people, except the collectors themselves, that understand and that know what the machine is doing, how it does it. And we wouldn't want to go into too much detail, but to show them some of the things, sort of like we do on the pony break, and then uh, uh, have those grandstands and have the crowd be there to under, uh, understand it. Another thing we had talked about doing, which we probably will do next year, we uh, will have the engine and the thresher standing there with the crew and open up the festivities by introducing them, talking about the machine, and then saying uh, that this machine will now pull out from between these grandstands, circle around behind the grandstands, and come in as if this was a farm stand. And they'll move into place, set up, belt up, get the thresh machine leveled out, as you, you know how to do that, and then the bundle wagons come in and do it just as if it were a genuine thresh. Now that will be a much bigger improvement still. It'll really be impressive, won't it? I think so, because the society today by and large, doesn't realize that we came through a period of time from the uh, 1800s, certainly the first two-thirds or three-quarters of the 1800s, where the agricultural population lived very poorly, didn't have much machinery, very little, if any, a few horse-drawn wooden machines, and then the threshing came in slowly, and by the ends 
uh, end decade of the, of the 1800s, it became uh, similar, not as advanced as it did in the 10s and 20s and early 30s of this year, of this century, but uh, they had advanced themselves and the agricultural population was coming up. They had things like Sears Roebuck catalogs and they could order the goods that the city folks had at their fingertips. All of that put the uh, development to such a point that agricultural people had bettered their comparative position in the citizens. And the steam engine, of course, was so responsible for this whole development until relatively recent time. Relatively recent time. Another event, which is a very major event, like the thrashing, and uh, one of the very key people that we have in this organization, of course, is the Prony Break. Uh, one of the most major events, uh, as well as other things. And uh, you have kind of built that event up in the years. Uh, I think you've been coming here since around 85, somewhere back in there. That's right, yes, that's right. And uh, not kind of you to say that. I have worked at it. I, I better look in here rather than at you, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, the pony break for many years was uh, feared looked down upon. Uh, people would say, oh, it's hard on an engine. It's uh, not the thing I want to put my engine on to. But totally the reverse. Totally the reverse. Because uh, many engineers uh, for over the years would put their engine on a fan and they'd have a dead load from the minute they opened the throttle until they shut down. It'd be an absolute dead load. They couldn't even get to full speed. Crony brake, you can do anything, light load, have him adjust his machine, tractor men adjust their carburetors while it's running, all sorts of things. It just is no comparison. And that has slowly come around. And we do have a nice event. We have three grandstands there, as you know, and uh, they ask a lot of questions. People want to know about performance. Uh, they are told a lot of things in tractor advertising and in car advertising. Some of it's badly distorted and that be as it may. People do live, all of us today, in an era of performance of some sort of engine and horsepower. So that's why they're interested and that's why they ask these questions and we try to answer them. And of course we demonstrate. And uh, there are a lot of questions where you have to answer sort of extemporaneously. You can't memorize it. And like one fellow said, you almost have to never do the same thing twice. Well, it isn't quite like that, but to a degree, we do. And uh, people come back, they want to know more about it, and we've had a lot of compliments. And I like to do it if we get compliments. Anyone likes to do that. And Chatty and the board here have been exceptionally cooperative, much more so than some of the show boards would have been. And they've poured this big, heavy concrete platform out there, as you saw, put the brake there, and uh, it's excellent. I have also put out it isn't finished yet, a 26-page booklet, uh, 26 or 7 pages. There is uh, one or two, may, possibly or there are two pages that don't have a picture on it, but the others all have pictures, and it goes through the entire subject of introduction, the building of a prony break, how to run it, and uh, there's been some interest. It's still in the uh, rough form, and we're getting it retyped with the all the uh, editing out and the typos and that sort of thing. But whether it has enough interest to actually publish it, I don't know, but we'll have it available in copy form. Possibly Don Knowles, I haven't talked to him yet with engineers and engines, but if he's interested with some sort of cooperative effort, we might just put it together and have those pictures of much better quality than we can on a Xerox. But nevertheless, there is interest, it's growing, young and old, and uh, I appreciate your compliment because we have worked at it, and it has been very well received. Well, I'll tell you what, if it had Amos Richman's name on it, I'd buy it. <laughs> That's a very nice compliment, I must say. A good example of the break, of course, is in those stands, those people, uh, it's a real crowd pleaser, and they do enjoy it, and the proof is there. Yes, they do. It's, uh, we don't only uh, talk about the technical side uh, and get, we do a little of that, and uh, some of them don't care as much for that, but we like to apply it practically, answer the questions, and then 
we put on uh, not just a dead load or a light, steady load, whatever. We vary it and we put uh, a simulation of a threshing machine or a simulation of a sawmill or we talk about the governors, how accurate they are, and we can change that load and show them how the governor operates. And, and as I've told the story occasionally, uh, one time I was standing by an engine at a show. And a little boy said to his daddy, what's that little thing up there that's revolving around, those fly balls? And his dad didn't know, and he had no reason why he should know. He wasn't a steam engine man. He said, oh, I think that's an ornament that the engineer has put on there. Well, obviously, uh, it, well, it isn't. It's a very key item. It's the governor that controls it. And those old governors, a lot of people don't realize that, but those old governors are more accurate than the modern tractor governors. Now, I don't mean to say that they can't make modern governors that accurate. They can, and they do on generator sets, and they do on a lot of things. But the average modern tractor does not have the percentage of governor regulation that tight as those good steam engine governors do. And that's something that most people don't know. So uh, that's one of the things. It's, it's a vast subject, but it applies to us. It applies to us in daily life. And therefore, we've had some interest. People like... Uh, one man who was the foreman of a, of a Cummins diesel uh, repair shop, a big one. I had seen him before. The third year he spoke to me and he said he realized that the forces that we were involved with from a torque standpoint were several times as high as his diesel engines. And he had never stopped to think that he had a lot more horsepower, but he was running at 2100 and we were running at 250. So our torque was several times as high as his, and that sort of thing. So it's not just the spectators, it's even the men of that caliber, uh, as I say, the foreman of a diesel, a Cummins diesel shop, that hadn't stopped to think about it. He could understand it easily. But we all do that. We don't, we don't think about things sometimes, and it's just common, and when we can see something, whether it's this or other parts of this show, that's why people come back. Well, one other thing I want to be sure and touch on here, Amos, and that one thing is uh, this key figure. You most definitely are a key figure, as far as I'm concerned. When it comes to dedication, an individual like yourself to drive, I guess, about 800 miles, or you live up around in the Iowa area, I believe, you come down here every year to be at this program, uh, to be at this show, and you work real hard here. And uh, people come to this show all the way from New York back to California. And I've asked them personally, uh, out of curiosity, just why did you come to Pawnee? And I've heard more than once, we come here to see Amos Richmond. Well, that is a compliment, I must say. Certainly thank you for it. And, I'm, and I think that, uh, that we try to give them the answers. We can't always be right, but my, that's a nice compliment. Well, if we don't have the answer this year, we'll find it next year, won't we? I, I would say so, yes. Uh, I would say, too, that people that come here, I appreciate your compliment about my coming here as, as often and in the, in the distance. Um, I would like to say that I'm one of those who have the interest in what we've just been discussing, the, the prony break, the performance, the technical side, a bit more than maybe people who would drive that same distance every year just to collect something just to paint it up, mm -hmm. not necessarily to know the, the performance side or know how to fire it and operate the engine. And uh, that's fine too. There are a lot of people that do that, spend a lot of money for, for an item, whether it's a steam engine or even a stamp collector, we might, as you know, they spend a lot of money, or a car or whatever, and that's fine. But uh, I would say that uh, my interest would be as we have been discussing. And uh, I think possibly I could take some satisfaction in saying that a lot of those people that you mentioned and that I have seen do seem to be pleased to get some answers like that, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, I would like to personally thank you for what a fine job that you've done here, and uh, the first person I'm going to look for in 1992 is Amos Rixman, and I uh, really appreciate everything that you've come here to Pawnee to do for well, us. Jerry, that's a light, nice compliment. Thank you very much. I, I, I do want to say, though, don't emphasize it too much. I could do nothing without Chatty, the board, the men that work, and the enthusiasm, and that's what Pawnee is all about. It's not just me, that's for sure. We all work together That's here. correct, and you